Hi there and welcome to video 6 of the Angles video series. In this video we're going to explore a whole range of ge geometry problems, geometrical problems, and we're going to learn how to solve them. Okay, well, when we learn how to solve geometrical uh, problems, let's just gather all the facts we know about geometry, uh, the ones that we've learnt about in recent videos, just so it, they we're fully armed, ready for battle. Okay, so we've got angles that make up a right angle. They will add up to 90 degrees. Angles that are situated on a straight line, they kind of make up a straight angle. They will add up to 180 degrees. Angles in a revolution, they'll make up uh, one full lap of the angles diagram and they will add up to 360 degrees together. We have vertically opposite angles are equal and we have to remember that uh, the ones that are opposite each other but a bit horizontal will also be equal to each other, so don't get fooled by the name there. Okay, when we've got parallel lines we've got corresponding angles are equal. In parallel lines alternate angles are equal. And if the lines are parallel we've also got an arrangement of, called co-interior and those, uh, that arrangement, that pair will add up to 180 degrees. We say that co-interior angles are supplementary. But those last three only work in parallel lines. Okay, let's have a look at a range of problems here. Okay, find the value of A degrees here. So we've got uh, 40 degrees and A degrees making up a right angle there. You can see the right angle symbol in the bottom left hand corner of the angle. So uh, the rule we use that is that angles in a right angle add up to 90 degrees. So we can see that uh, A and 40 will add up to 90 degrees. So I think you'll be able to see that A will equal 50 degrees. We can check on our calculator there by doing 90 minus 40 and we'll get our 50 there. Okay, the rule that we have here, both these angles are sitting on a straight line, so they kind of make up a straight angle together. A straight angle in geometry uh, is equal to 180 degrees. So you can see that B and 150 might make 180. So uh, angles on a line add up to 180 degrees. Can you see what number might have to go with 150 to make 180? We could check on our calculator, but B will have to equal 30 degrees. Okay, here we have two angles, the 50 degrees and the one we're trying to find, the C degrees there. And can you see that uh, a combination of the 50 degrees and the C degrees make up one full revolution? Let me show you. So if we started from this arm of the angle here, we go around 50 degrees and go around C degrees. Can you see that we're making one full revolution? Okay, so we'll use that rule that angles in a revolution add up to 360. Now I've already got 50 degrees there, so we need what's left out of 360. So we'll do a calculation there. We'll just subtract 50 from 360 and we'll get the rest of the angle there. So the rest of that angle, if you check on your calculator, will be 310 degrees. Okay, we've got two lines intersecting here. We've got D degrees and 75 degrees. Um, Okay, these are vertically opposite angles and we know they're equal, so we don't have to do a lot of calculating here. D will just equal 75 degrees. Vertically opposite angles. Okay, now you're asked here to mark a pair of alternate angles on the diagram below. Do you remember what alternate angles were? Well, they're on alternate sides of the transversal and they're in between the parallel lines. So there's a couple of alternatives here. I'll show you both alternatives. So alter, alternate angles here will could be here on the left hand side and the right hand side and they're both between the two parallel lines or another pair of alternate angles could be those two. So they're the alternate angles. Now we're asked to mark a pair of corresponding angles on the diagram below. Now there's lots of different alternate lots of different versions here. Uh, okay, so we could have corresponding. Now, now corresponding, another name for corresponding is matching. They've got to be in matching positions. There's two intersections there. There's a top intersection and a bottom intersection. And we need uh, pairs of angles that are kind of in matching positions. Let's have a look. The two green blobs here. We've got top left in the top intersection and top left in the bottom intersection. So can you see how they are matching each other? Another alternative would be 
bottom left in each intersection, top right in each intersection, or bottom right in each intersection. Now, co-interior angles. Well, we'll be careful how we mark these. Co-interior means uh, together inside. There are two sections there that are uh, possibilities here. Let's have a look. You've got these two angles. Now, I've deliberately drawn them with different symbols because it's rare that these two angles are equal to each other. Matter of fact, the rule is that they add up to 180 degrees. And so it's proper that we don't have those markings uh, using the same symbols. So that's one um, pair of angles that are together inside that section. And we, we've got another uh, version as well over there. And once again, I've uh, deliberately drawn them with different symbols. Okay, now we're using our uh, parallel line rules here to answer a few questions. We're finding out missing the values of missing angles here. Okay, what uh, position are the, these in? Well, we've got one on this side of the uh, transversal and the other one's on the alternate side of the transversal. That's a bit of a clue for you. Yes, it's basing uh, its answer on alternate angles being equal in parallel lines. These are in, in an alternate position. So if they're equal, then G is going to equal 72. Next question. Now, okay, we've got to figure out, is this alternate, corresponding, or co-interior? This H is in the top left-hand corner of the bottom intersection and the 112 is in the top left-hand corner of the top intersection. So they're in matching positions or corresponding positions and the rule says that corresponding angles are equal in parallel lines. So another situation where we don't have to do a lot of calculating here. If they're equal to each other then H is just 112 degrees. Okay, now these are in co-interior positions here. This one's together inside with this one. We'll make sure we've got different symbols there. Okay, now they, these aren't equal to each other and they don't really look equal either, do they? So the, our uh, other scenario is that they add up to 180 degrees. Co-interior angles are supplementary. It's a fancy name for adding up to 180 degrees. So can you think what might have to go with 60 to get 180 altogether? We could do that on our calculator by doing 180 degrees minus 60 and we'll get the rest of it then, won't we? So K will equal 120 degrees based on co-interior angles adding up to 180 degrees in parallel lines. Okay, we've got a two-step equation here, a uh, two-step uh, problem so solution here, hopefully. So let's have a look. Now, first of all, we want to um, find out M and then from that we'll find out P. Now to go from here to here, can you see that this is in the top right hand corner of this intersection and this is in the top right hand corner of this intersection. Two intersections here, one there and one there. Top right, top right. So they're in matching positions, corresponding positions and corresponding angles are equal in parallel lines. So that's a long way of uh, a uh, roundabout way of saying that I think M will equal the 40. Okay, so if I write that in, I wonder what rule we might use to link the M and the P so that we can find out what P equals. Now I'm going to draw a line here. Make it a bit clearer. Okay, there's a big line here where, where the 40 is sitting and the rest of that line angle, and straight angles equal 180, um, the rest of it is made up by the P there. So can you see that um, 180 is being made up with P and 40? So we could probably write something like this. P plus 40 equals 180. So what would have to add to, to 40 to get 180? Well, I'm hoping uh, you might realise that it might be 140 degrees. So we're used to, we've used a combination of two rules because we had two angles we had to find there. The first rule was corresponding angles are equal and then um, the next rule was that uh, angles sitting on a line add up to 180. So we're sometimes asked to combine two rules together but we'll just do them one step at a time there. Tricky one that one. 
So there are two answers, m equals 40 and p equals 140, and they're both based on rules. Now, this is a tough one. This doesn't even look like our normal uh, diagram of parallel lines and a transversal, and that's the problem. So what I suggest firstly is to, we, we're allowed to make all the lines bigger or longer uh, so that we can recognize that it is actually a parallel lines situation. So I'm going to show you uh, by drawing the lines a little bit bigger here. There are two parallel lines. They didn't look like it, but they had the two parallel symbols on them. And uh, we've got a transversal that goes like that. So can you see that um, that kind of creates uh, the 50 and the N and the 60 in a special arrangement that we might have seen before. And I'll show you with the green here. Can you see that that green is a section of co-interior angles? Um, so we're going to use that co-interior angles being supplementary or adding up to 180 degrees rule here because you've got that angle and that angle together inside that section. They're in a co-interior position. So we think we're going to figure out that, okay, the 50 and the N and the 60, they're supposed to add up to 180 degrees. So let's write out that carefully in a bit of a, an equation arrangement here. It's a bit tricky, but still, the N and the 50, let's have a look, the N and the 50 and the 60 should all add up to 180 degrees according to that rule of co-interior angles. Okay, so we're going to then join up the 50 and the 60, we can add those two together, and we get this uh, slightly simpler arrangement, N plus 110 should equal 180. Can you see what, what N must be if it's going to make 110 into 180? Um, we could check on our calculator, but N will equal 70 there. So it's a tough one, but did you notice the first bit that I did? We extended all the lines so that we could then recognize that it actually is uh, parallel lines cut by a transversal. It didn't look like it at first, but draw the lines bigger and you might be able to recognize some rules that you can use then. Okay, we've got our tests for parallel lines here. We're asked to state whether or not the diagram below contains parallel lines. Okay, so we've got 80 degrees in each of these positions here. Top right hand corner of the top intersection and top right hand corner of the bottom intersection. Can you see that they are matching or corresponding angles? And they are equal, they're both 80 degrees there. So I think that fits nicely. It passes one of the tests for parallel lines. And that test was, um, are the corresponding angles equal here? And so we'll say yes, these, these uh, lines are parallel. We could then go ahead and draw some parallel markings on there just to show that we're pretty sure they're parallel now. Okay. Is this um, alternate corresponding or co-interior angles? I think uh, these are on alternate sides of the transversal here. And so they're alternate angles. Now, alternate angles are supposed to be equal in parallel lines, but look, we've got 82 degrees here and 79 degrees here. So they're definitely not equal. So this particular arrangement of uh, angles does not pass the test here. So we would not say that they're parallel, those two lines. Okay, this is an arrangement of two co-interior angles. They are supposed to add up to 180 degrees if these lines are supposed to be parallel. Co-interior angles, they're supplementary, they're supposed to add up to 180, and they do. So that 50 and that 130 there add up to 180, so yet we're confident that they're parallel lines and we could draw our symbols in then at that point. So they passed the co-interior angles, adding up to 180 test for parallel lines there. Okay, so there are all our rules we used. Um, so to solve geometrical problems, it's really important that we get very, very good at remembering all those rules because uh, we can't answer a question unless we know all those rules really well. So I've got all those rules there, angles in a right angle we used. Uh, we ang used a couple of angles uh, that are on a straight line. 
we did a uh, revolution question, vertically opposite angles, we did a problem on that, and those last three that are to do with parallel lines. Now let's make it perfectly clear, this is a really important point I'm making at the end here, these last three rules, corresponding angles are equal, alternate angles are equal, and co-interior angles are supplementary. You can have angles in those positions, but uh, let's put an asterisk on each of these and make the final point of the video here that those last three rules, corresponding angles are equal, alternate angles are equal, and co-interior angles add up to 180 degrees, that only happens if uh, th those things are only true in parallel lines. Let's be clear on that. Okay, so if you know those geometrical facts really well, you've got a half a chance at uh, solving all those geometrical problems. If you know the rules well, the questions aren't all that uh, difficult in the greater scheme of things. I know they look tricky at times, but learn the rules well and then you'll, that, that'll give you the best chance. Thanks for listening. That's uh, the end of the Angles video series. Watch the videos over and over if you like and get really good at angles and that'll help your uh, final results, I'm sure. Thanks for watching and uh, as usual, I'll refer you back to peterblakemaths.com for all your mathematics needs and uh, learn all the skills in all the different types of topics there and get really great at your maths. It's all up to you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.